how you ended up getting recruited back to WCW at that point in time. I think they may have been, uh, if not ahead of WWE, getting there. How did that process work uh, when you jumped to them? I'm sure WWE may have offered you something at that time too. Well, when I left, when I was in ECW, WWE hadn't didn't offer me anything. WCW did, and uh, and plus I didn't I didn't want to go back to WWE because I they would have I don't think they would have used me the way they um, the, the way I wanted to be used, you know, and um, and so when I got to WCW, they used me really well at first, but then I just felt like it was my time to move up the card and. They didn't, you know, there was the, there was 10 guys, you know, 10, at least 10 guys ahead of me, you know, that were all, that had been on top for years that weren't stepping down. So, you know, what are you going to do? And I think you were one of the most iconic characters from that Nitro era. Thank you. Did, did you have uh, much creative pull when, when they brought you in? Yeah, they, they, they surprisingly, Eric let me, um, he said, uh, he said, you're the only person besides Hogan that I let have creative control over his stuff. Not, not full control, mind you, but, you know, let you come up with your own storylines. And then he, then he uh, gave, then he had, when, he, when Dusty came back, uh, he, had, he had Dusty work with me in Saturn, you know, so we could keep coming up with our own stuff. But I was, I, I tried to be really smart about it. Like, I tried to do angles only with guys on my own level or lower, because I knew if I asked for top, uh, top guys that, they weren't going to, they either wouldn't let me do it or I would end up doing a job at the end, you know, and, and, and come out the loser, not the, the I'd come out the loser of the storyline, not the angle. And I, I, at the end of the match, I'm at the end of the series, I'm always going to lose because I'm the heel, but I, I didn't want to think I'd be able to come out as strong in the storyline unless I was working with somebody I knew like DDP. So I tried to keep my angles with like Canyon, DDP, the flock, you know, guys that, were you know that they they wouldn't have a problem with me shining the way I needed to shine, you know and uh, and I so I tried to be smart about it like that, um, but uh, what I like the idea of me sitting in the stands that was Terry Taylor's idea that was a brilliant idea, yeah. and I think that was also his idea to have me pass out instead of tapping to Benoit. Now is it true that the flock would often get fucked up in the stands? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We were drinking. We were getting drunk. One time we tried to call our ecstasy dealer, but uh, he couldn't show up in time. Was alcohol pretty much accepted backstage in WCW? We've, we've heard the stories of Hogan having the garbage can full of beer backstage. I don't know. Hogan's locker room was a whole, you know, that was a separate locker room for Hogan and his buddies. Um, You know, uh, no, I don't think, you know, I don't think people had beer backstage, you know, but everybody was pilled up, though. You know, how much control did you have over the members of the flock? I didn't have enough because if it was up to me, they would have got wins. Like they used to like Kidman would always complain. He goes, how come you can't get us any wins? I'm like, I try and I go, I go to Sullivan. I go, come on, give these guys some wins. And Sullivan would go, somebody, some have to die so that others may live. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, but can't they, uh, do they have to be the ones that die every time? And he's (laughs) like, and he's like, and I didn't realize like, Sullivan at the time was like it was like um he would he would do he would do stuff like he would say to try and get me to to come up with something on my like okay like I come up with an idea and uh, so I find out I get to the show and they'd say um and they'd call me in to give me the finish and I, they'd say we need you to put over so and so and I go that's a great idea but but because I'm doing this and this wouldn't it be better if I went over and like that and so. I, so because of that, I wouldn't, I didn't do a lot of jobs. Uh, not that I was, and, and it's not that like they had a problem with it because it was just asking logically. Like if I would have left and came, like Ken used to say, how do you get away with that? And I'm like, well, first of all, you can't leave and come back because they'll just go, oh, we already sent it to the truck. Oh, we can't change it. I go, you have to come up with the idea on the spot and you have to have a good fucking reason, a better reason than what they have. Otherwise, why would they change it? So I would always have to have a, a better reason. And then it, and I didn't realize, but the Sullivan, like it became like a challenge. Like it's so me and him would. It was like a, it was like a, a friendly competition to uh, to come up with ways of not me, me, uh, me to not lose and him to get me to lose. <laughs> 
Now, as far as Van Hammer, he was a guy that seemingly had a WCW contract for years and years and years, never really went anywhere. Uh, what was your opinion of him? I know he's had his serious uh, brushes with the law lately. Yeah, I, I like Hammer, but I didn't I didn't want him in the flock. I didn't want uh, almost none of those guys that I want other than Saturn and Sick Boy because I wanted all new guys. Like I would I felt like if you give me retreads, people know they're retreads. Like Riggs at least we did something to make him into a, you know, into a character with us. But like, you know, and Kidman was fairly new, so that was cool too, but when they started giving me, you know, and Horace was was uh, Hulk's nephew, so that was definitely going to be put a Jimmy Hart goes, hey, can you do Hulk a favor? Put Horace in a flock. I'm like, I don't have any say in it, but absolutely. It's, it's, if Hulk wants it, that's fine with me. But like Hammer and Reese, no offense. Like I like both of them, and I was glad for, for friendly purpose, social purposes that they were in the flock. But I didn't want to pick them because they, they would just look like guys who were just getting a new act. You know what I mean? Like it was just, oh, that's a guy. Let's put him in that act because we have nothing for him. Whereas a guy like Hammer, I would have taken him off TV for a year and revamped him on his own, you know what I mean? Or find a way to repackage him. But you can't, I hated when they would just take a guy one week who was so-and-so and and then next week they'd repackage him and he'd be so-and-so without being off, you know, a different guy without being off TV for a while. John Tenta, I think, was the worst for that and maybe Brutus Beefcake too in WCW. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Now, as far as Perry Saturn, have you heard anything about him lately? He seems to have dropped off the face of the earth. Yeah, I don't know what's happened to him lately. Like, uh, I was in, we were in touch for a while when he surfaced, but when things aren't going well, he tends to disappear. Um, and he doesn't want to be he doesn't want to be a burden to anybody, which is a shame because he's such a great guy and everybody loves him. But uh, yeah, I got I got In fact, the other day, my uh, my ex wife my ex wife's my best friend. Like, we um, we're closer now than when we were married, if that's even possible. And um, and we uh, and she was even saying she's like you got to call. Yeah, she goes like when's the last time you called Saturn? I got like a month ago. She's like did you hear? and um, and I go but he didn't return my call. Like he doesn't. He's really bad about returning calls when he's not doing well. She's like you need to check up on him again. I'm she's right. So I gotta I gotta give him a call again. At least a couple calls. And I guess Stephen Richard said in a shoot interview. I don't know if you've heard about this that he felt you took advantage of him in WCW. Um, did you ever see that clip? WCW? Apparently, uh, according to this fan question, he said this in an RF video shoot interview. I took advantage of him in WCW? Yeah. He was only there for a couple of weeks, and then he quit. I, bear, I hardly even remember him from WCW. So, yeah, I didn't see the clip myself. That was just a fan question, so there's the answer. You didn't hear anything about it. Um, now you had a, a match against Goldberg where, uh, he beat you for the U S championship. Any thoughts on him? And, and I guess he was probably the biggest star WCW created from scratch. Yeah, absolutely. He was a star. He, he had got a lot of bad advice. Like I've, I've seen him since, you know, in the last couple of years, not the last couple of years, but probably in the last five, 10 years. And he was, uh, it was, he was very thankful to me for putting it, for helping him with such a, to have such a good match. And he was uh, very apologetic about not listening more to me about like trying to get him to sell some and stuff like that. And uh, he's like, oh, like, I just had a lot of the wrong people in my ear. And I'm like, yeah, it's totally understandable, you know. But uh, but no, I, I like Bill. I've always I've known Bill for years. He's a really good guy. Um, and and I'm really proud of that match too, because you know, considering his uh, his ability to work, I think I got one of the th- one of the three best matches out of him ever. You know. Are you impressed with the longevity he's had recently? I think he was still champion this year. Um, not too long ago, he held the t- WWE title. You know, he's smart. Like, he got away, and he became valuable again, you know? And he uh, and people, like, look, people want to love the guy. He, he looks like a machine. Nikita Koloff was probably the first person to do that character, you know, when he, Nikita was a baby face. Same character, the jacked-up, like, maniac, you know, machine who looks like he could kill anybody. Um, and, uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm happy for Bill. I'm real happy for him. A couple of fans had this question. I don't recall it because it was obviously over 20 years ago now. 
but I guess you had a famous stare down with the Macho Man in WCW that I guess some fans felt there was more to it than just an angle. Yeah, the, um, I've, the only reason I even remember it is because I've seen pictures on Twitter of me and him staring off. And uh, I think they just did it. I don't even remember exactly how they, why or anything other than, I think it was just, a, you know, a, a, a tease. I don't, I don't know. I don't think we ever had any contact. I don't, I don't think. I guess you didn't hang out with him much backstage or anything. He seemed to be someone that would uh, do his own thing. Yeah, the the really top guys all hung together, and and then um, and then the Mexican guys hung together. Um, me and Saturn and a group of guys would all hang together. You know, it, it breaks down into into cliques, you know, into factions. You know, just you get along with people you get along with, and and it's always easier to get to get. It's also you. It's not so much a hierarchy, although it is, but you tend to hang out with the people you're working with, you know? So if you're working on top, you're hanging out with the top guys. You know, if you're working in the middle, you're hanging out with the middle guys. I see. Um, what did you think about his early passing? Macho man? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I feel, I don't know. I mean, you know, yeah, it's crazy. So many people pass young in this business. I'm going to guess the Ultimate Warrior was similar to Macho Man. You didn't have much contact with him when he was back there? No, not much at all. So what was the straw that broke the camel's back for you to leave WCW? Um, I wasn't happy with the way I was being used at that point. I, I felt like it was my time, you know, and I was also, you know, self-destructive, which I didn't realize. And, um, you know, I had demons and issues, which I did know about, but the um, I just felt like it was my turn, and I wasn't getting. And then uh, Eric said, "You know, there's a door." I'm like, "All right, there's a door. I'll take it." You know, I figured I'd go to WWE at that point, but then Eric said, "I'm not letting you go to WWE." And I go, "Well, you just told me there's the door, so I mean, he's like, well, you can't go there." And then uh, and then we talked some more that night, and then uh, he laid out an idea that he had for me, and I was about to come back and say, "You know, I'll stay," but then when I found out that. The, the extent of it, I was like, this isn't going to raise me any, you know, it's going to leave me on the, in the same or lower level, even though it's, it was a good idea though. It was a really good idea. Um, but, um, but anyway, you know, so I quit and then, uh, I went to ECW and then became a really big addict. My addiction got really bad. And, and but then it also led me to getting clean. Thank you for watching the Hannibal TV. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and click the subscribe button to not miss any of our latest shoot interviews, match videos, or news updates. Support us on Patreon.com for $1.99 a month to watch our full shoot interviews ad-free and help our channel grow. Follow us on Twitter at The Hannibal TV for instant updates.